Okay, we're back here with this Briggs and Stratton head, the overhead valve, and we're going to take this spring off here and put this valve seat back in. See how that goes. Going to use this spring compressor here that latches when you're compressing. You got the latch right there. So you stop where you need to and it won't release. We're going to set this like this and this piece here goes on the on the valve itself. And you have to set how wide you need this. And this is really made for a car engine. So it's a tight fit here. Need to turn this a little bit. I think it'll fit better if I go that way. All right, so I got that compressed pretty good there. As good as it'll fit. Now there's a couple keepers in there that have to come out. There we go. That's about as far as that's going to go. So right here, there's two little valve keepers that need to come out of there. There's one. If that one came out, this one should come out. It just needs to get rotated around. These are probably going to go in a lot harder than what they came out, but that's what it looks like. It's it's just a half round, and there's a little a little groove there, well, a little part that sticks out in the center. There's a little groove in the top of the valve here for it to fit in. So now we've got to release this. I pull that back. Put my hand over this so the parts don't go flying anywhere. Now we got this that fits on, on top. Then we have the spring here. And there's nothing that goes on the bottom. And the valve already slid out of this end here. So the valve was in like that. So it looks like the valve's not bent. If you had some kind of lathe, you could put it in there, but uh, it's going to be good just the way it is. That spring's really not strong enough to bend that, as long as it doesn't get hit by the piston. So we're going to make sure there's no dirt on that. The face here. This is ground at an angle for better airflow when it's running for the air to go through there. It's a press fit in there. That's the way it's made. So it's giving me a hard time. I thought earlier about doing this and I went and stuck it in there by hand anyway. So putting that valve in there is going to make that go in straight. As long as I don't bend anything. I'm going to give it a couple taps with this hammer here, this mallet. I don't want to use anything metal, but we're going to see what happens here. Well, it got straighter for sure. But I think I may need to take it out and start over. Because it's not, here you can see it at the valves. It's moving a little bit, but it doesn't look like it's bent at all. I 
think maybe I'll get a, a socket and try and tap that in. Okay, so I got a socket that's going to cover the whole the whole seat there. If I can tap the whole thing in at one time. I got a pulley under there to help stabilize it. Okay, I need to hit on the other side a little bit here. And the parts are falling. Not a surprise. Okay, it's going in there little by little. And I'll pick this part up here. My so-called workbench here is a little bouncy. That's not helping my, my cause here. Might be better off putting it on the floor. And we're just about there. little bit yet. I need to go to a smaller socket now that fits just inside there. Try right, this one. Yeah, I think this one's going to be the do a little bit better. <laughs> because that seat does get recessed a little bit. Right now, it's flush. This one here is recessed just a little. We're going to see if we can get that to go down, because I think I see a gap underneath it. We're going to try a little bit here. Yeah, we're getting a little bit out of it. Now you can kind of see a line there, like over here. So it's, it's going down in there. Now we want to make sure that it's in there all the way. Because if it's not flat down in the hole... When the valve goes in there to close, it's not gonna it's not gonna seal all the way around. See that that makes an, an airtight seal all the way around. So we need to make sure that we're all the way down in there. All right, I'm going to call that all the way down in because it really feels like it's not going any farther.
So now we can really see what kind of condition this valve is in. We put the valve down in here. Get it down in all the way. Now, as I rotate this, I'm not sure if it's showing up. Right here, that's down tight against in that position. If I rotate it, if I put it right there, you can see it's not down all the way. There's, there, it may not show up on the camera, but it, it's not down all the way. If I rotate it like this, you can see that head is actually wobbling a little bit. Now, maybe that's for me hammering on it to put the seat in. Maybe it got bent. When the seat popped out, it may have bent the valve. So if you're going to attempt to put the seat back in, you want to make sure that you check the valve like this because it'll probably run like this, but it won't run right. You'll get some, some backfiring. You'll, you'll get some extra exhaust going out. And what that can lead to, that it can actually burn this valve if you run it like this for a period of time. Because every time the, the spark plug fires, you're going to have some exhaust gas going through that valve. And you, it'll have enough compression to run, but it won't make the power that you want. And you'll actually end up burning that valve like, on, like cars used to do years ago. Because you can have a valve that was not sealing right. and or just totally not closing all the way. And all the other cylinders would make the engine run. That doesn't happen too much on a single cylinder engine. They, they both have to work. But, uh, so I'm going to tap on that. See if I can get that straight. If not, then maybe I'll get a different valve and see how that works. But I do have other heads here that I could I could use another head. Which really means that I wouldn't have had to do any of this. But not everybody has another head laying around. So we'll see what I can see what I can get out of this. All right, I believe that'll work because the stem of the valve needs somewhere to go while I'm hammering on it. And I got to hold this up. Hold the punch and swing the hammer all at the same time. So, yes, this is very unconventional. This is just about a lesson in what not to do. But we're going to see if we can get this valve straightened out here. Without breaking anything that is part of my body. Let's give it another one. Well, I don't think that's going to work because it really just doesn't have the leverage to straighten it out. Unless I use the socket. Let me try the socket once.
Well, we have progress. We now have a two-piece valve. Probably somebody watching this video says, is thinking, I saw that coming. And that's all right. Because now you know, don't do that. So probably everybody that's not a mechanic learned something here. These are fragile. They're very hard, but brittle. They don't like being made to go somewhere that's not straight. And they may bend a little bit, but they don't bend back. Now, I wasn't worried about damaging anything here. Like I said, I have another head I could put on. But we're going to try and we're going to take a valve out of another head and see how it fits in here. Because really, the video I wanted to make was about putting a valve seat back in. Now, maybe that valve was bent from the valve seat coming out. Maybe that valve got bent from what I did. Uh, don't really know. You know, maybe I messed it up. We're going to take another valve, put it in there, and see how that is. So here we have another one. I know what you're thinking. Why don't I just put this head on there? Well, maybe I should just do that. This head's a lot dirtier than that one. It still has the little caps on the valves yet. Like I said in the earlier video when I took this apart, these adjusters are actually both the same. On this engine, somebody did work on it before I got to it, and this nut was turned in farther. That's why the, the locking screw was out farther from the nut. They should both be about the same. That's the way these engines are made. And if you look across here, you can see the height of the valves are actually the same. Before I took that apart, I looked. And the valve I was working on was, was lower. It wasn't sticking out. But I already knew that the valve seat was holding the valve open. So, just for the sake of reusing that head, we're going to take this valve out and, uh, and put it in that head. There's one keeper that fell right out on its own. And we release this. Take that. Now, it looks like this one may have had a running problem. Maybe it was running really lean. That's what it looks like to me, that it's white instead of black. Or it could just be that the material that was on there oxidized from sitting in my garage or wherever it was sitting before I got it. So... Maybe this will show up, but when I turn that, the, the face of that valve is nice and flat, nice and true when it turns. I don't see anything. I don't see that going up and down at all like the other one did. The other one, the face was, was a little crooked, either from the valve seat in the spring or from what I did to it. 
But this one is, is really nice like that. So we're going to use that valve. Now I'm going to peen around here so that this doesn't come out again. Which means I'm going to take a punch, put little indentations around there. I'm going to make that fit a little bit tighter so it stays in. But you don't want to hit it too hard. You don't want to you don't want to move the metal too much because then the valve seat is not going to be round and it's not going to seal. So in general, this video is about putting a valve seat back in, and uh, you got to see a little bit of how not to do it, because I broke the valve. Now for the most part, some shops will do this. If they do any kind of machine work, they would probably put the seat back in or they they get a new seat and put it in. Because this head is savable. This head's still usable. But they would probably get a new seat and put it in. But there's really nothing wrong with the seat. It just has probably enough hours on it that the seat worked its way out. And it, that's something that does happen from time to time. Now it gets a little bit tricky here. Now we got to put these little pieces back in. And we're going to use this spring here. Get this dirt off of it. And just in case you're wondering, no, this is not what I'm doing to a customer's mower. This is this is my mower. This belongs to me, and maybe I'll sell it eventually. But so yeah, I wasn't worried about really breaking anything. But if you're just a homeowner, this is a good example of what can go wrong and what to be careful about. I'm trying to get the angle I had before to put this back together so that you can kind of see what I got to do here. There we go. So that's going to go on the spring. And this goes on the valve back here. I got to push back in by hand. Now we're going to... This has to all be nice and straight. Of course, it's not going to cooperate. And there is a, a different style of spring compressor there's this here but this one is just too wide for the top of this valve so if I had a smaller one of those that would work but I don't but I knew I had this which is adjustable for really small ones like this all right so now I'm starting to get some tension here now we can try and get this back up here where you can see it. I need to compress this without hitting the other valve with the tool. So 
So that's pretty good right there. Now we got to put these guys back in. Little retainers. They don't go all the way at the top. They go down a little bit. The one there. Now that one's not quite where it needs to be. That one's a little bit low. But I'm going to release this a little bit. Don't believe they're quite where they need to be yet. So this part here is really the trickiest part of this whole job. Getting these containers back where they need to go. Put my microphone back on here. Get some of this grease off my hands. I think it's not quite not quite there yet. I'll tap on this a little bit to try and seat these. Okay. Take this and see just how far that sticks up there. That looks about right. So these retainers, there's a groove here at the top of the valve. And there's a reverse groove in the keeper there. So this slides up and pops in like that. So you got these two. And they fit on there like that. Now these are actually tapered a little bit on the outside. They're, they're, they're cone shaped a little bit. And matches the same shape here with your top, your uh, plate that goes on top of the spring. I can't remember what it's called right now. I'm at that stage. Sometimes you can't remember. But that fits in there like that. And then you got your spring here. And that's what keeps your valves in. Ideally, they would be spaced evenly so the gap would be the same on either side but it's going to work like just like this it's not going to come out but the important thing is that both of those are at the same height that one's not higher or lower than the other because with it like that they're locked in that's not going to go anywhere it even holds itself up and that's what we have here that they're locked in and even on this one that i didn't touch they're a little closer on one side than the other. So that's good to go now. That's all back together. Now we just need to clean the, the surface here where the gasket goes. And we'll be ready to put this back on after I clean the engine. I got to clean the same thing on the engine. So here we have a gasket scraper. It's, it's not a chisel. It's actually a gasket scraper. From... 
a long time ago when I was an auto mechanic. Straight off the snap-on truck. All right, there we go. That's cleaned up. Plenty good enough to go back on the engine. And that's the head gasket for you right there. Just like that. So installing this back on the engine will be in another video, so watch for that, and please like and subscribe.